you know, from the beginning, the campus operated in what was called in loco parentis, right? It was in lieu of the parent, the, the university and the college and the normal school all had certain responsibilities uh, for, the, for the students while they were here. Well, we didn't have students living here on campus and besides the Oviatt House experiment um, and then later the Pollock House, uh, the, the campus really wanted to um, expand that opportunity for students uh, to live here and to change sort of uh, campus life, right? To be more residential, like you'd find at a private college or at the University of Wisconsin. For then, most students then lived in boarding houses here, uh, and they had to be approved boarding houses, which meant that the people who ran those houses had to um, enforce certain rules that the campus uh, provided them about um, student behavior, particularly the behavior of female students. Um, as the campus grew again and their curriculum expanded, uh, we wanted that, that new experience. So uh, between Radford's being built, um, there was almost an unending construction of dormitories on campus. Uh, 57 Webster Hall went up and then all the way in 1967, the Scott High Rise dorms were the last ones. So for 10 years, it was just a constant construction site here as more and more residences were being built. Great story about some of those rules that were enforced about this building that I've been told. Maybe we got some Radford alumni here, perhaps. Um, of course, there were rules as if it was a women's dorm. And one of the big rules was about, you know, obviously who could enter this building. No men were allowed to enter Radford Hall. Um, and of course, there were curfews as well, strictly enforced. So the story goes, uh, right behind these glass was sort of a living room area. And uh, women would come home uh, from dates, they'd get here a little early to make sure that they would make curfew, right? And they would linger out here with their dates. And then this, um, they called this the fishbowl, this big glass here, because uh, women who were already in for the night would sit there with their popcorn and watch the show outside <laughs> as goodnights were being said and, and otherwise. Uh, this building was actually built on the former site of Frank Radford's house. Uh, so it's kind of a double uh, name because it was the site of his home, but he was also a local regent as well. Frank Radford was uh, president of the Radford Company. They made doors and windows and, and millwork and so on for a lot of houses across the country.